In the new Hatsune Miku set, we got a pretty ridiculous combo that I haven't seen a lot of people talk about. And, you know, me being the jackass I am, I looked into it to see if the deck was actually doable, consistent, and, you know, even good. So let's see if the Uro Tendo combo is actually something we should consider building. First off, before we talk about how the combo works, we need to look at what the cards actually do. Oh, and all the Urotando cards are music hero characters, and they have different colors here and there. It'll make more sense later. And let's transition to audio only. Kaito Underhanded Blue is a 3-2 blue music character with 10,000 power, 2 soul, and a soul when triggered. I did talk about him in this card of the day video that is being linked at the top right corner. Also, link in the description. But I'll talk about him here as well. He has two effects, one of them being a Climax combo that looks like it's straight from War and Peace. His first effect is that it heals. So far, so good. His next effect is Pay 3 at the start of your Encore step if Uro Tando Underhanded Rangers is in your Climax zone. This is in your front row, and you have another character named Underhanded Green, Underhanded Red, Underhanded Orange, and Underhanded Yellow, which are all the Uro Tando cards. You may pay the cost. If so, look up to two cards from the top of your opponent's library, choose up to two of them and put them on the top of the library in any order. Put the rest in the waiting room and perform one of the following effects of your choice. Deal three damage to your opponent, deal four damage to your opponent, deal five damage to your opponent, this damage can be cancelled. So you get all the rangers on the field, look up to two cards from your opponent's deck, rearrange them in any order, and then you can send the rest into the waiting room. Then you could do any amount of damage between three and five as one block. Pro tip! Toss those climaxes, see how many climaxes your opponent has, you know, in their waiting room, judge it from there, and depending on what you decided, 3, 4, or 5 would be the best bet. If it sticks, great. If it cancels, oh well, at least you went for the soul damage. Here's the climax, it does have two arts and they are both climax commons. It is a thousand plus a soul and gate when you trigger it. Here we have Mako Underhanded Red, a 2-2 red character with 7,500 power and a soul when triggered. She has two effects and her first is that you do not need to meet the color requirement to play this card which is really great help because you are running all four colors in this deck. And during your turn for each other music character it gets 1000 power. Pay 2 is pretty steep but with the full field which is what you are trying to go for it does go up to 11,500 with 2 soul and that's not counting the back row. It is only during your turn so it isn't that great of a defensive card but as an offensive card it could run over a lot of things. Here's Hatsune Miku Underhanded Green, a 1-0 green character with 2,500 power, 1 soul, and no trigger icon. She has two effects, and her first is if you have two or more other characters with Underhanded in their name, this may side attack without soul penalty. Slightly difficult to get it going because there are only five characters with the name, and one of them are level 0, and the other two are level 1s, discounting as well. But it's still doable, side for one every time. Its last effect is that it's a clock shoot bomb and the opponent's cost is zero. Slightly conditional, but in today's meta, a lot of cost zero cards are floating around. A lot of good level one cards with the encore effect are actually cost zero, so this lets you get rid of them easily. Up next is Kagamina Rin, underhanded orange, a 1-1 one, one yellow character with 4,000 power, one soul, and a soul when triggered. She's the support of your deck and she has these two effects. At the start of your climax phase, choose one of your characters with underhanded in their name and that character gains plus 2000 power for the turn. Also, rest this card. Choose one of your music characters and that character gains plus 1500 power for the turn. It's a win-win situation. It is only one character and if you don't have an underhanded character, you can just rest in and you boost up any character on the field. Again, only one character, but that's still pretty good. It's a big boost. Last rotator card is Kagamine Lena, 0-0 yellow with 1000 power, 1 soul and no icon when triggered. It has two effects and he's another support character. All of your other characters with underhanded in their name gain Encore, discard a character from your hand to the waiting room. So it gives a character discount Encore. It is really nice because it does help your Uro Tanders to stay on the field. So you could go for that last push or at least it could help you reach up to level 3 and it lets that level 2 stay on the field for a really long time. It's other effects is that you pay one, rest this, and then it's a standard brainstorm search. Send the top 4 of your deck to the waiting room. Any climax you reveal, you get a music character. 
So yeah, once per turn, but it is a searching brainstorm. All of the Uro Tanner cards are music characters along with this entire set, so you could get whatever you want. And pretty much you could just get any card that's missing in your combo. So, those are all the Uro Tander cards. There are other cards that we're going to talk about, but let's talk about how this combo goes. Throw Len and Rin in the back row. Rin powers them all up one by one. Len gives them Encore, and you can search your characters. Miku is, uh, she's there for the soul damage. The clock shoot is kind of situational, but it's still pretty good. The so Mako is a fucking monster, especially with the Len and Rin. And then you got the main cat, who is kind of useless if you don't have them all on the field. You heal, and that's it. Get the Climax on the field, plus 1,000, plus a soul to all of them. Miko can obnoxiously go up there. And then attack. Miku can side for 2 soul. Mako and Keito attack for 3 soul. Obviously, this is not counting the trigger cards, which is even better. And then Kaito pops off on his ability, and then hopefully you'll go for game. So if you get 4 each of the Uro Tando cards, you still don't have a full deck. So what cards can you throw in there to get a full one? I have some suggestions. Again, these are merely my suggestions of how I think the deck could run. This is a beatdown deck, at least that's how I see this deck going. And the cards that I'm gonna suggest, they will increase the consistency of the combo, and they could even give you like little extra boosts for all the characters that you have, leading up to the level two and the level three, pretty much filling up the in-between spots. I'm gonna start with the level ones because it's kind of lacking in that area. You don't need to run reds at all in this deck because you don't need to fulfill the color requirement for the level 2 Mako. So there are going to be no red cards. You could obviously throw a bunch of red cards if you want. I actually do really like the level 1 Miku and but I'm not going to put them in this because honestly there's really no need to. I would say Kagamina Rin Astray isn't that bad of a card. On play it gets a boost for the turn and the climax combo lets you salvage a character, reveal the top two cards is neat, but not that necessary. The Climax is a thousand plus a soul and a wind and a soul when you trigger it. For the blue, I would say using Sea Lily would be cool. It boosts an other card when it attacks. Unfortunately, not itself, but it can help with a 1-0 Miku. Oro Tander get over a couple things. Not a lot, but enough. Then you could clock the top card of your deck and you could salvage a tail of the Deep Sea Lily. Here's that card, it kind of sucks it's a level 2, while the card that salvages is a level 1. But it is free to play. Its effect is good, cycle through your deck, and you get two music characters, because you look at the top four cards of your deck one by one. So reveal top four, get one, reveal the next four, get one, and you'll probably get a deck refresh. Obviously, you'll play these Mikus. They are good, and some of the Tate's cards in the set. Silent Voice Miku is the searcher of the deck, but only level one or lower characters. Three of the five Uro Tanders are level one or lower, and you could get the obvious Mikus as well. Maybe Engage Miku would be good. It is 500 forward, and when you play a Climax, one of your characters gets plus 1,000 for the turn. You might not want to run it, because you need the back row for the Uro Tanders, but it is a good transition card, because the plus 500 forward can be nice until you draw one of the Uro Tanders and go for game. Especially when you're going for the level 0 and the level 1 Uro Tander. At a level 0, you could play this until you get the level 1 Uro Tander. And then you just, you know, squish it, send this, and then you're good for your back row. Pumpkin Dream, yeah. Ambivalence does have kind of have that restriction for its first effect. At the start of your opponent's Encore step, if this is in your front row, you could discard a Climax from your hand, search your library for one level 0 or lower character, and you could put it on any slot on the stage, and then you could shuffle your deck. Yeah, pretty much nothing to say here, you could get whatever you want. It does help you get to that level 0 Uro Tander a lot quicker, along with a bunch of other cards. Raspberryism is another good one, you clock yourself and you ditch a card, and on play you could search a Climax and add it to your hand. On the flip side, you have Ivy Grimoire, where you ditch a Climax and on play you get a Salvage a Music character. And yes, there are some older cards that you could throw in there, but I'm pretty sure that some of you already know what you could throw in there. I didn't make a sample deck, but I did throw in a bunch of cards onto WS decks as some suggestions that you could run for your Rotander deck. Again, this is not a deck, just some suggestions for some cards that you could use to help build your deck. I put the WS deck link in the description. Jump cut. Okay, so is this deck good? No, not really. Uh, there's a lot of holes to be filled in, even with the cards that I'd recommend. There's still a lot that's missing. Mainly what's missing is a good level 1 game. Even with the Climax combo that I did recommend, it's still good, but it ju just increases the consistency. What you can do is that you could mix it up with a couple of these cards here. Those will help it. That way, 
you don't rely entirely on this one. This doesn't really seem like a main deck. This seems more like a small engine that you could be running because the level zero can switch out any music character. So you could use that effect for like, let's say this climax combo or this other Miku combo that you can be running. But other than that, yeah, you're relying a little too much on that level 3. Uh, the level 1 could side for no soul penalty, which is actually really, really good. You could go for 1 or 2 all the time. So you're guaranteed damage there, and it is a clock shoot bomb, so you could get extra damage as well. But that doesn't really hold you off. So when that level 1 is gone, what do you have left? All you have is the support card at the level 1. So that's why you have to run different climax combos along with this engine. There are a lot of good level 2s in the Hatsune Miku set, like this one that gets you a free deck refresh, and there's this one too. And level 1, like, like I said, this climax combo is good, this one too. And for the level 3 along with Kaito, you want to use his effects, that way so you could end the game quickly. But if that doesn't run, you can run this Miku, you could run this one too, because those are good level 3s. You could even run this early drop, I don't know if it could help. All in all, I do like the cards. I like it if everything would go smoothly like in that demo I showed you in the middle of the video. But it probably won't be going like that every single time. All the cards that I did mention and the, all the cards that I showed and the ones that are in the link in the description, they could help boost the consistency. They could give you like a little bit more power here and there, but it's still you still need a lot more and it's still lacking. So by all means, you could make this deck prove me wrong, but that's just my opinion. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Vice Wars content. And I'll see you guys in the next video.